Good morning friends. In the last class we are discussing about tail volume ratio primarily to ensure that the airplane has adequate static stability. We also realize that there are distinct roles for wing and tail. Wing has the primary responsibility of producing lift to balance weight or lift for maneuver. However, the horizontal tail its primary responsibility is to produce enough restoring moment so that it is statically stable and of course dynamically also stable. And in that connection we realize that if I plot CM versus alpha then if this is my alpha trim that is which corresponds to a CL trim and which is it's a CL design I can visualize like this and this slope at trim we say DCM by D alpha I can visualize it through CM versus CL where this is directly the CL design and the slope is slope here at the equilibrium is minus static margin. So if I know what is the CL design, I need to look for which for example for a cruise CL design could be under root CD naught by K, it could be 2 W by A, it could be edit, it could be W by S by rho V square depending upon the situation. So once I know what CL I am going to fly, please understand when I write CL design and if I know for most of my operation this is what I am aiming for, so I will always design the aircraft in such a way that I, can, I should be able to trim the airplane without deflecting any elevator, right, okay. Because you could understand that if I have basically designed my airplane here for the CL design 1, if I want to fly at this CL, then I have to give elevated deflection so that this negative moment is countered. So that means I have to give a little elevator up. Right. The moment you try to trim an airplane with elevator up or elevator down, you are giving drag penalty. So if most of the time I am going to do, uh, fly the airplane at a particular CL design, I should ensure that CM versus CL follows this trend without applying the elevator, right? Where I know that the slope DCM by DCL should be minus static margin and we design for let's say, so we design the static margin we keep around 5 to 15 percent depending upon what level of confidence I have got on those aerodynamic estimations. Now the question, the second question we are asking that okay we realize that DCM by D alpha of the whole aircraft the primary responsibility is of tail and the CL design this is the primary responsibility of the wing. But then the question came where do I locate wing, how do I locate tail in combination so that both these condition the DCM by D alpha less than 0 and the static margin within 5 to 10 percent is satisfied. That is our aim is and this treatment will be purely on a conceptual stage, we will use little bit of expressions. So aim is where do I locate wing and tail so that it has static margin 
design and trim design as per the design, which I mean CL trim. Right? Okay, that is our aim. Now let us go back to our aircraft stability and control class, which we have done. And before I use anything, let me recall if this is the wing, we define something called wing setting angle IW. And similarly, we define something called tail setting angle, which is IT. As per the convention, this is positive. And IT, anything down is negative, right? And then if I measure reference distances from wing leading edge, then somewhere it is XCG. Or to be more precise, let's say this is XCG. And somewhere it will be XAC. Whenever we are writing XCG and XAC, all the linear dimensions are non-dimensionalized by Minerva dynamic chord, all these things we know. And if you recall, then the our aim is if I want to fly at a particular CL, let's say point 0.2, and static margin I require is 15 percent, the slope here is minus 0 0.15, which essentially means this value should be 0 0.03. Right? Okay. To make life simpler, because this is this graph is based on CM is equal to CM at CL equal to zero plus DCM by DCL into CL. Right? At a conceptual stage, you may find little difficulty in visualizing through CM at CL equal to zero. It is better as an approximation, you try to visualize like this C m equal to C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha. Right. So if you see C m versus C l this demand that C m at C l equal to 0 is 0 0.03, so you can always find out at alpha equal to 0, if it is a Kemba Dero foil. If it is symmetric or a symmetric orofoil, then this point is C m at C l equal to 0 as well as the C m at alpha equal to 0. Please understand, at a conceptual stage, we are talking about the expansion of C m, assuming everything to be linear. Okay? So, if this is as point 0 3, you can always find out what is the corresponding value of C m at alpha equal to 0. In fact, I would request, request to at a conceptual stage, you better use this. There will be some differences, but this will give you a good conceptual uh, configuration. And once you configure it, then you go for detailing what is C m at C l equal to 0, all such things you should modify. And if I follow this, which is C m equal to C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha, then you recall that C m naught wing is equal to C m A C wing plus C l naught wing into X C G bar minus X A C wing bar. And C m alpha wing is nothing but C l alpha wing into x c g bar minus x a c wing bar, where c g is the aircraft, c g is of the aircraft. This is the wing contribution towards this c m naught. Okay? So, let me erase this, so that you are not confused. So, we write it like this, c m at alpha, and let us say this is C m naught, let us say I require something called 0 0.025, let us example. If I require C m naught to be 0 0.025, then what for a designer it means C m naught 
of the aircraft, which should be called to 0 0.025, which should be called to CM0 because of wing plus CM0 because of tail plus CM0 because of fuselage. Right? At a conceptual stage, we will say, okay, this gentleman is zero. I make my life simpler. If I want to see CM not of the aircraft, I need to know what is CM not of the wing, and CM not of the wing is CM AC wing, and this value I know because I have selected an aerofoil. The moment I select an aerofoil, cambered aerofoil, I know CMAC is less than zero. Let's say that value is minus 0 0.025. Now, the CL0 wing also I know because I have selected an aerofoil. So now it depends on me how do I locate AC of the wing vis a vis CG of the airplane, right? The whole problem is you may have initially some rough idea about the CG location because you know what are the layouts, layout of the different systems longitudinally and generally it will be around 40 to 42 percent, you can see historical data. Now the question is how do I put the wing, I put it something like this, where AC is ahead or AC is behind. The problem is as you shift the wing, the CG also will change. So, a lot of iteration goes on. Okay. So, this is an idea which needs iteration and as far as CM0 of the tail is concerned, that is if we recall is given as neta VH into epsilon naught plus IW minus IT and CM alpha tail given as minus neta VH. C L alpha tail to 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha. So if I write this expression here, then it will be clear how to manage these expressions. So let me write C M naught of the aircraft equal to C of the wing, which is C M A C wing plus CL0 wing into x CG bar minus x AC wing bar, right? And then CM0 tail is plus neta VH epsilon naught plus IW minus IT and CM alpha of the aircraft roughly equal to C m alpha of the wing that is C l alpha of the wing into x c g bar minus x a c wing minus neta v h C l alpha tail to 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha and you know that d epsilon by d alpha the first order approximation I can write as 2 CL alpha wing by pi aspect ratio E. We have already chosen aspect ratio E as well as CL alpha wing. This value may come around 0.3, sometimes 0.4, it's pretty large. So you have to locate the tail, those will be in the final design. Let us not change the focus here. What is our aim? We are if I am This is my alpha trim and this is the CM at alpha equal to 0 I required. Then I need to ensure that I lay the wing in and tail in such a way I not only get the slope, here the slope is CM alpha, but we have started with DCM by DCL. So you can always know DCM by DCL is DCM by D alpha into 1 by DCL by D alpha, right? So, if we are designing for minus uh, 15 percent, so this value is minus 0.15 and CL alpha if it is around 5, so you know that 
dcm by d alpha will be equal to minus 0 0.75. So, it is very easy to translate. Okay? Correct? So, I am talking in the C m versus alpha. So, I know the alpha trim, which I know from C l trim. Right? Okay? So, I need to have C m at alpha equal to 0. Let us say, I started with some 0 0.025. Let us take a number. Let me take some number. Let us say, C m naught is coming out to be 0 0.025. Let us say five. Take a fresh number. Five. So that means this whole gentleman should be equal to 0 0.05. Right? That's CM naught is for the aircraft. Please understand. I have working with CM versus alpha. So CM at alpha equal to zero is 0 0.05, which will not be same as CM at CL equal to zero. Okay? But we know that from Whatever C m at C l equal to 0 is required, we can approximately find out what is the C m at alpha equal to 0, because we know at alpha equal to 0, there is some C l. So, we have shown that. So, let us work in this fashion as a conceptual stage. It is simpler way of handling it. It does not make much of an error. So, if you see this expression, if you have put a camber arrow foil, this man will be of order of minus 0 0.025 to minus 0 0.08, if you take or minus 0 0.1, if you take very highly cambered arrow foil, the value will shift towards this, to, towards minus 0 0.1, so much of concentrated nose down moment. So, if you want C m not a C positive, so you have to nullify this, that means if this is minus 0.1, let me take an extreme example. If this is minus 0.1 and if you require 0 0.05, that means the contribution from here should be minus 0 0.15, right? Positive component. It should be positive contribution. Okay, this is minus 0 0.1 and this is this contribution. If it becomes plus 0.15, then the total will be 0 0.05. Now, the question is how do I get such a huge component plus using these two expressions? What are the options you have got? We know that C L naught into this, this man is positive, no issues. This will give a positive contribution as long as this difference is positive, and this difference positive means if you see our diagram, from here we are positive, this is so this is CG and somewhere here it is AC. If this XCG minus AC has to be positive, that means AC of the wing, AC of the wing should be ahead of CG of the wing. Right? But more you and more you put AC of the wing ahead of CG, your CM alpha of the aircraft, what happens? If I put A C of the wing ahead of C G, C here, then this becomes positive as this being positive is helping in getting C M not positive. But the moment this becomes positive, this first term which is coming from wing, that becomes positive and C M alpha of the wing positive means it is destabilizing. Right? So, this sort of a conflict starts. Again, if I go back here, I say, okay, no, I will not take the AC of the wing so further ahead of CG, a little bit. Rest I will compensate from tail. So, CM naught tail, I am trying to see how it can help in getting CM naught aircraft positive. You see, if I see the C m naught tail expression, it is meta V h into epsilon naught plus I w minus I t, right. V h you know it is tail volume ratio. is typically is 
s tail l tail by s c bar and l t is the distance between a c of the tail and c g of the airplane all these things you know but look here if it is a camber aerofoil epsilon naught for a camber aerofoil epsilon naught will be 2 c l naught by pi aspect ratio e approximately so this gentleman will be a positive number right if it is a more cambered then this epsilon naught will be more positive but more cambered means cmac is also becoming large negative then you have i w minus i t the message is as long as you keep i w minus i t greater than 0 it will give you positive cm naught isn't it and you can scale it up by increasing the value of vh so if i increase tail volume ratio and if i increase this difference then cm naught the aircraft will become more and more positive so what is the meaning in terms of design meaning thereby if i have a wing here and tail here i can increase cm naught contribution to the aircraft by let us say first case I put I w equal to 0 and let us say it is a symmetric. So, epsilon naught equal to 0. So, in this expression if you see this man goes to 0, this man goes to 0. So, only way to get C m naught positive from the tail is make I t negative. Right? If you make I t negative then this man will become positive. So, the solution is Okay, you do this. So, how I am laying the wing? No wing setting angle, however, there is some tail setting angle. Also, it means that I can also do like this. See, I put tail setting angle, let us say, let us say 3 degree, right. I do not give negative tail setting angle, I give positive tail setting angle, but this angle is 1 degree. Do you see this? Then also, I w minus i t is becoming positive, I can generate your C m naught positive. This is important. Right? You will realize that such configuration where i t is positive will help in reducing induced drag at the tail because of tail which I have discussed in your performance course, but mostly you will find this is a preferred configuration and to be more precise the preferred configuration is if you are not giving a setting angle if this is the CG you put a camber aerofoil wing AC little bit of ahead of CG of the airplane and you give some setting angle maybe minus 1 to minus 6 degrees, 6 is the higher side. How much I should put AC ahead of CG that we will know once we try to see that the moment I put AC of the wing ahead of CG the stability gets affected. So, I need to ensure the static margin is what I am designing for. So, I must ensure this tail area, wing area, tail location is good enough to give me the neutral point where I get static margin of around desired static margin. And if you recall the expression, if you, if you recall the expression for neutral point, neutral point in bar was x. A C wing by C minus C M alpha fuselage by C L alpha wing plus nita V H C L alpha tail by C L alpha wing to 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha, where D epsilon by D alpha is approximately minus 2 C L alpha wing by pi aspect ratio of so, now you have got these three things. 
or in fact, if you see 1 and 2 is sufficient, you have to iterate between 1 and 2 with, with a variation of wing setting angle, tail setting angle, then tail volume ratio, very, very important. You will start with VH, start with 0.5, go up to 1.0. Make iteration so that the condition to be satisfied is CM0 equal to CM0 design, let us say typical value 0.05 and DCM by DCL which is XCG bar minus XNP bar that should be minus uh, static margin which will be minus let us say 0 0.15 if I am doing 15 percent static margin uh, design, design aircraft. So, what is it? I iterate 1 and 2 and try to satisfy these two conditions, then I will get various combinations with IW 0, without IW, symmetric aerofoil, embedded aerofoil, tail setting angle, all those data will be generating. This is the theory behind it. In the next class, once you know this theory, we will now tell a designer how he picks number. Right? Like VH should be 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. What is the historical trend? And immediately you should, if I say VH 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, you should immediately know, oh yes, what is being done is satisfy these two conditions. Right? Then those numbers will have a meaning to you. That is why I thought I will revise this quickly and prepare you so that tomorrow when I discuss the how a designer picks those numbers. For example, designer will say, I will take VH around 0.8. 6 or 0.8 to start with, right? Then he will ask a question, how do I know LT, tail moment arm? Because CG is not clearly known. So, all those numbers, 70 percent of the fuselage length, what will be the fuselage length? All those things are you know, based on statistical uh, results. So, those things I will be discussing tomorrow. So, that at a conceptual stage, you can configure it and then finally, you do accurate calculations. So, that is, was the purpose of this lecture today to warm you up that now we are going to use this through a designer's perspective. Thank you very much.